going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Vile Files Going Deeper edition. And do we have a doozy episode for you today? A lot of love is blind to discussions, mostly because we have, dare I say, America's sweetheart joining us this episode. Shayna. Just kidding. <laughs> Deep, deep. Well, Shana will be joining Shana's us as well. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting. Uh, when I posted that uh, Deep D would be joining us, a lot of, lot of excitement around uh, us having that discussion. I, too, uh, am thrilled to have Deep D. What a, what a great moment for her uh, at the, uh, on the finale of uh, Love is Blind 2. Uh, people more on the fence with, with Shana. Um, she definitely uh, rubbed some people the wrong way. But it's only fair that we, uh, you know, learn about her. And also, we have some questions for Shayna. Like, you know, I know I have some questions. Like, was it really the religion? Come on. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I'm not so sure. Uh, why did you just leave in the middle of the night? You know, stuff like that. Would you want to, like, is there anything going on with Shane? Maybe a reconnection, a rekindling? They, they definitely tease a lot of these relationships. Like, there are maybe... Maybe there's some other going on with other couples. There's maybe there's rumors about uh, Deep D and um, is it Salvador? Maybe I think it's Sal. Yeah, Sal. I saw a photo of the oh. two of them, kind of like cheek to cheek. I mean, they took a picture. Right? I don't know, but we have to ask the question. We have to ask the question. Anyway, so we have both of the those uh, ladies on. Excited to talk to them both. And uh, before we uh, we have them on, we. I think we must, well, first, we'll, we have some other pop culture things, I, I think, that are burning and we need to just discuss, as well as uh, covering a, a more kind of intimate breakdown of just love is blind in general. Let's do that before we get a chance to, to uh, talk to both of these, these ladies. Uh, what do we got on the, uh, what else is going on in the uh, world of uh, pop culture world. and society? In the world. <laughs> Um, sure. So I don't know if we all recall the John Mulaney divorce situation. It was very public, very messy. And it was shortly yeah. after. It just felt like there was one thing after another. It was like, first, he's getting divorced. He's going to rehab. Now he's dating Olivia Munn. Now she's pregnant. But Olivia Munn shared a very, very sweet photo of John Mulaney and their son at SNL this past Saturday. And it seems like things are going shockingly well. Did anybody else see this coming? I feel like everybody else was like, did you think what they it would like end in a tragedy? I think I thought it would end in a bit of messiness. So might, but that's I guess that's my question. Is I think so often like of course like having a newborn is incredibly stressful, and having kids is not lauded as a big solution for relationship issues. But there are things. It's clearly a connective force. It really well, unifies cer people. Certainly, it's a a distraction from other common problems. enemy. <laughs> <laughs> I I would hate to. Who's the common enemy? I was joking about like a baby that's not sleeping, but uh, obviously you love your child very, very much. <laughs> was was Olivia Munn using her baby for uh, sympathy? Because she was kind of public enemy number. Did we blame more John Mulaney or Olivia Munn for like the home wrecker? Because it was we all don't we don't know timing, but when it all came out, it was like divorce. Oh, we're like I found that they were together like moments later. Yeah, it felt like moments. Also, society likes to always blame the woman and not the man in these situations. So I'm just I'm asking you, the ladies, what? Uh, I feel like he. It's more up to him, and he gets the blame if there was any crossover than her. She wasn't married. He was. If if I'm her, if I'm John Mulaney's ex, I blame John Mulaney. Yeah, as but you should. People all the time, like I'm a question to think. Every week I get some sort of a question that's like, I'm in love with a buried man or something like that. Like, what should I do? And I'm always pretty hard on them. But like, they're definitely not off the hook in terms of like regardless character of choices. Yeah. Right? And like, regardless of like shadiness, it's also a matter of like strategically, like you're going to, this man fresh out of a divorce and rehab, like you think now is the time to cultivate a relationship with him? And then they got pregnant like, Felt like moments later yeah, after that. Yeah, that can't have been planned. I don't know. <laughs> Who's to say? Well, but anyways, it. But it, the fact that now they have a baby, we're all kind of like, oh, you're like a yay, family, family. <laughs> <laughs> Got to pivot real quick. Listen, I, I I hope they're doing great uh, for everyone's sake. For for 
for John and mostly the kid. But uh, it's glad that everything's going well. And 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 what's I, I, I what's John's ex name? I hate calling Anna Marie. Anna Tumble. Marie. I don't want to keep referring her to her as the ex. She's more than just John Mulaney. I my favorite thing was she when she posted on Instagram in the heat of kind of when all the divorce rumors were spiling this like s- extremely artful photo of her sitting alone at a dinner table like clearly waiting for something like, waiting for someone and it, the caption was dinner in March and it was like ooh this man did you dirty like it was just a really really like evocative like it was like art on Instagram yeah. So. I can't say I'm rooting for John and, and Olivia. I'm not rooting against them, but I, I'm not. They're definitely not someone I'm just like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, well, because I feel like Twitter made the point of like, John Mulaney's famously a wife guy. His whole stand-up thing was like, I'm a wife guy. Yeah. I'm good. I'm polite. I'm respectful. And I'm good at office politics. So watching him then like turn around and like discard his wife. Now he's just another fuck boy. Another fuck boy. Yeah. Another fuck boy who's flew too close to the sun. Um, speaking of potential fuckboy moves, a video surfaced last week of The weekend making out with CB, who is famously Bella Hadid, The weekend's ex, friend, or former friend. But they're this, not friends anymore? Well, they stopped following each other on Instagram oh, back in April of 2021. You know how we feel about that. So, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it's like, it seems like they were on the outs, but nevertheless, there was certainly a period of time where the two women were good friends, and... Now there's a video of her hooking up with Bella's ex. What do we think about, is it ever okay to hook up with a friend or former friend's ex? Is there ever a time like or a scenario where- High that's school. A- <laughs> it's okay in high school, I feel like. Yeah, I had this conversation with a girlfriend yesterday and we were trying to see who we had crossovers with. And it was really only one guy that we'd both slept with. And neither of us care. Like, we just operate from, like, we wouldn't care if 90% of the people we slept, slept with. with. Exactly. We were talking about how there's a difference. So yeah. it's like, it depends on the relationship, I think. Because I really don't care. I'm like, you know, get it. But if there's like a, a history, maybe then not so much. You know, it's weird because like I, I had three very serious relationships in my 20s. I believe they're all, I think they're all married, right? But let's say one of them got separated or divorced. And I found out like a friend of mine from back in the day, or, or I guess a friend, you know, one of my friends got divorced and they like got together. It would be weird. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't be mad. You know what I'm saying? It's so far removed from me at this point. But yeah, like I think in adulthood and, and Bella Hadid in the weekend, like they dated for a while. Like, that was it's a, a relationship. Yeah. Like- I think it's a very taboo move. It also kind of begs the question with a friend, like, what were you thinking when I was dating this person? Like, were you secretly like harboring feelings for them or just like, I don't know. I feel like it just like calls. Yeah, I, 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 I get you can go there, but like, I mean, sure. Like, you know, all they attractive dated people. for three years on and off. I feel like then he's off limits. Yeah. That's especially, too long. Especially the on and off part. Yeah. Because if you date someone on and off, there are periods in which you still obviously have feelings and feel connected, but they're a free agent. And that makes you wonder, could there have been something going on when you were in the off period? Mm -hmm. Was your friend maybe not really? And who do you go to when you're like on the off with your, you go to your friends and confide. And and meanwhile, she's just like, I'm out. Like then that's even, that's, that's real. That's real shady. It's not a good look. Mm-hmm. Are there are there scenarios in which I guess it's can be okay? Sure. I mean, time really is the only like. But for, I guess if if she if the girls aren't friends anymore, if they unfollowed each other in April of last year, maybe well, then I mean, it's like not, we're all strangers. They're not friends, so I guess then you're just like, oh, I don't care. We're not friends. So but, I feel like maybe at this point they're just all three free agents. No, but like I guess it could be like playing into. Is this even a move out of spite too? Mm, right. Because the friendship ended. Ended. Yeah, because I feel like if you hook up with a friend's ex, you're sort of saying, I am prioritizing this. I guess it really, unless the- It's like, I never want to be friends with you. Yeah, it's sort of saying, I'm prioritizing like me getting this over our friendship, unless it's a unique situation in which for like your friend has been made it explicitly clear that you're totally fine with it and comfortable with it. Yeah, I don't think, I don't know anything about Bella Hadid, but I'm guessing- that she didn't like give them their blessing. Take care of your mental health. 
It's maintenance. Maintenance is the key to anything. Maintain your happiness, your well-being. And if you are stuck in a rut, it's also amazing for that too. Finance problems, anxiety, relationship problems, friends, family. BetterHelp is helping people connect with uh, uh, mental health care professionals easier and better than ever. You could be talking to a, a, a therapist within 48 hours from going to the website. Bam. Uh, so many people have thought about therapy and then they've tried to find a therapist and it was like challenging and uh, how do I do it and where do I go? Well, you can do it from the comfort of your home, on a tablet, on your phone, on a computer, and they will make sure they get you someone that fits with you, your needs. They have so many uh, therapists in their network and that uh, work with BetterHelp. Over 2 million people are taking charge of their mental health with BetterHelp and you can too. Uh, right now, you get a special offer being a Vile Files listener. Get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash Vile Files. That's better, H E L P. Visit betterhelp.com slash V I A L L F I L E S. That's better, H E L P, help.com slash V I A L L F I L E S. If you haven't listened to the Janet Jackson, uh, Even the Rich podcast, well, you are missing out. I mean, Janet Jackson, uh, a legend in the music space. Janet Jackson was torn to shreds by the media, setting up unfortunate trend for the way many female celebrities in 2000 were treated. Who was to blame for this mishap? Even the Rich has the whole story. Uh, what an illustrious career she had. And it came to a screeching halt during that very infamous uh, 2004 Super Bowl. And uh, a lot of people involved in that situation, and yet it was only Janet Jackson who seemed to have to pay the price. Well, learn more about uh, that whole situation and uh, and her influence she had on people like Madonna, Mariah Carey, uh, and even her brother. Fascinating series, Wandering Even the Rich, and uh, the Janet Jackson story might be their best one yet. Listen to Even Rich Daily on Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, Spotify, or you can listen ad-free by joining Wondery Plus in the Wondery app. So let's talk about Love is Blind 2 before uh, Shayna and Deep D call in. Uh, we, let's talk about basically the rest of the cast uh, and the situations. Nick and Danielle. I don't know why. They're my favorite couple. because Really? Not, not because I, I, who knows what's going to happen. Should they be together? Should they not? I don't know. But I, I did find them to be the most entertaining. What did you think about the conversation that uh, she had with her girlfriends on the like bachelorette boat of her being like, I need to work on myself first. And her friend was like, if you wait until you're perfect and like you're at your best, you know, like you're going to be out of time to like find someone like you don't need to be at your best before you're in a relationship. That's what you find. Like, I just thought it was an interesting back and forth. Sure. And that's I think it's a common thing people talk about. You know, it's also like an excuse people can use to get out of a relationship. The big question is, is Danielle in a situation where uh, it won't affect their relationship? You know? Yeah. And it kind of goes back to the idea of like with dating, like you want to be yourself as much as you feel like you need to put on this performance and be this like perfect version. You want to be the most authentic version of yourself because you want informed consent on both parties. And so if you're going to be yourself, but you're also trying to grow so much, like where's the interplay in terms of like trying to break a pattern and evolve emotionally versus because I think I think it seems like there was kind of like Nick at times felt like the rug was being pulled out from under him. Like I, or like I think especially considering their initial conversations that they had in the pods versus the way they like instantly started fighting. I think he was sort of like, didn't Whoa. she also make a comment even like on their wedding morning that she was like, yeah, we've, you know, discussed what we should do. And, you know, Nick thinks that I should say no. No, she definitely, uh, it's like this endearing thing that she does where she like says things out loud. Sh she, well, she will audibly say these like kind of insecurities that she has. Many of us will just like keep it to ourselves. Um, we have we all have crazy insecure thoughts, but like that's nuts. Where Danielle, either she doesn't know it's nuts or she just says it anyways. Like, and then I don't know if it's because she's trying to test Nick. And like, listen, this is a crazy atmosphere that they they are in. It would make sense that anyone in this atmosphere. Where they uh, uh, not engagement? Like it's one thing to get engaged on The Bachelor, as opposed to getting married. It's a totally different scenario, and it would make sense whether it's right or wrong to do to see how much you can push someone to see how they react. I mean, I don't know if Danielle's doing it out of like any type of almost like a 
in the strategic Machiavellian way. But we always talk about like, you don't really know who you're dating until like you have a, a fight and see how they handle fights. And maybe Danielle is like, you know, what? I'm gonna fucking pick a fight and just see how this guy fucking fights. <laughs> you know, like, I mean, it's kind of smart. I mean, I don't know if that was her intention. And also, like, I didn't love how Nick always responded. Like, he wasn't, it wasn't bad, but he, you could tell he got a little snippy and frustrated and would calm down. But then you wonder, man, it's just such a pressure cooker of a situation. They did always seem to figure it out, though. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting how couples that had a very smooth entrance to the show, the way that they encountered fighting and like sort of turbulence in the relationship later on versus couples like Shane and Natalie. I would argue Danielle and Nick, like even in Mexico, she he went to that party alone and out of nowhere, she was picking uh, this whole yeah, fight. Yeah, I'm mean like the pods though. Oh, like okay. before, like when you, like the part of the experiment where you're like conceptualizing like what you think this person is before you've like been in the room with them, seen their demeanor, seen what like the everything. Mm -hmm. I think it's interesting. I feel like they, because they just had such a fast, beautiful love story in that sense. I wonder how much of it was like them kind of being tied to the like, we're, we're a fairy tale. And like, I want this to be a fairy tale. Like, we're a fairy tale, yeah, right? I think I think for right. all the couples, they dealt with that. I mean, like I said, what me personally, I was fascinated with Love is Blind because it was kind of like a show about what it's in a lot of ways like to get engaged on The Bachelor and make it to AFR. You know, that behind the scenes that you don't get to see because, you know, all we see is we're in love and the Instagram and like, but dating after they get engaged, there's a lot of like stresses that come from the show. And clearly, I think it was, it was kind of obvious that a lot of the stresses that these couples were experiencing was the pressure of the wedding and the, just being in this experiment, as they called it, right? Like if, if Nick and Danielle could just like go date, I mean, maybe they didn't fight about any of this stuff. It's a big struggle. So I, I hope for them, they, they work on it. I am happy to announce, I mean, nothing's set in stone, but we've been told that we will get Nick and Danielle for a mediation next uh, Wednesday on our Going Deeper episode. So we hope that follows through. We've been told that they have something they uh, are fighting about and they want to ask me about it. So I cannot wait. Guys, I, our I, podcast is like really popping off. Well, I I, I, hope, I hope that the people listening think as much. But uh, I'm personally excited. I, I, was, I was like, I have to, I want to mediate a fight that these guys are having. So hopefully... Uh, I think it's going to happen. Uh, we were told it's going to happen. We have Shayna and Deep D coming up. A lot of questions for Shayna. We have to discuss the, the shake of it all, in which Deep D has a lot to say about all that. Eye-opening stuff from Deep D. Were you surprised by any of her answers? Absolutely. Yeah. So was I. But before we get to Deep D, we're going we're, we're gonna to talk to, to Shayna. Uh, a lot of you have uh, a lot of thoughts and opinions about Shayna, and as, as did we. You know, why did she uh, leave Kyle the way she did? Uh, what was how religious is she? Things like that. Is there anything going on with her and Shane? What's next? Um, so let's let's hear it from Shayna, and after that, we will get into the conversations about Shake. Deep, deep. What's up, Shana? How you doing? I'm good, Nick. How are you? Good. Thanks for joining us. Uh, we are we are excited to have you. I feel like there are a lot of burning questions people want answered from you. I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, how do you? I mean, let's start with there. How do you feel about your experience? I mean, as someone, you know, reality TV. You know, there's posts, there's edits. You know, there's heroes. There's people who get criticized, you've gotten some, like, you know, you've gotten some criticism and I'm just wondering what is your perspective on your experience? And we'll, we'll start there. I'll be honest. The experience was actually, um, once in a lifetime, obviously it was a great experience. Um, I do feel my true character technically really wasn't portrayed in the best, but again, um, there's so much that was not caught on film behind the scenes. And so because there's so many hours of filming, they weren't able to get all of it. Sure. So unfortunately, I am definitely, I know I'm definitely being uh, portrayed as the villain, which sucks, but yeah, you know. I guess is what you sign up for. 
You'll live. I promise. Uh, I'll live. <laughs> uh, what is what is one thing in terms of like what you think the perception of you is versus who you think you are? What do you think is the what what's the biggest disconnect? Um, the biggest disconnect would definitely be the fact that I was a homewrecker trying to ruin Shane and Natalie's relationship when that wasn't the case at all. Okay. Like, um, because there was so much off film, the whole like beach scene, the ship with Shane had sailed way back weeks prior in the pods. And so I think the way, cause everything wasn't able to be put into the episodes, no one got to see the true story. So it definitely appeared that I was like trying to break them up. And that was not the case at all. Why did you leave Kyle? Why did you leave in the middle of the night? Or at least it sure seemed like you're like, you know what? Peace. And he woke up <laughs> and you were you. <laughs> and you were gone. Yeah, it looked like you ghosted him. Is is that uh is that not what happened? No, 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 no. I would not just leave him in Mexico. Um unfortunately, <laughs> why I left wasn't on film. So okay. they weren't able to show that. Why did you leave? Uh, when I was at I was very honest with Kyle and I had told him like, I, I can't do this. This is just, again, I, there, it shows I, I broke up with him for a reason. And I had explained that to him in Mexico and I just, I wanted to go home. I was kind of over it at that point. And I just needed to see my family again. Like we weren't able to see them and for about three weeks. And so I had no outside influence and I was just honest. I just said, I was like, I'm so sorry. Like, this isn't going to work for me. Like I can't do this. And so that's why I left. So you, you, you told him that before you left. Yes, of course. Okay. Of course. I don't know. It's her. I was like, is she no, just I leaving? Know. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. No, it did not help my uh, my portrayal of my character at all. Unfortunately, it wasn't on film. And so it looked like I totally ghosted Kyle. I didn't go. So you talked about, you told him the reason why. And, and a lot of that seemed, there seemed to be a lot of focus on religion. I, I grew up very religious. I'm a religious guy. And I'll be honest, I... I totally, I didn't totally buy it. It just felt like, now, not, not that I'm doubting your religious or your yeah. faith, that you, it might not be quite the non-negotiable that it seemed to be portrayed as, where it was like, hey, listen, you're, you're not in a god, so I can't date you. Where if it was like, say, someone else that maybe you felt more vibes with or were more interested in, you might have, you might have been a little bit more open-minded to their lack of faith a faith-based life what would you say to to that oh that's a good question because i've been i've actually been hearing that a lot and people are like oh shane wasn't religious and look at she was after shane and i will reiterate they didn't get to show it but when we were in the pods i had said like what is your like what is your view on it and he goes i believe in god he goes i go to church probably what four times a year but i'm not a very religious person and he goes and he told me he goes if my wife is like uh person of faith, like I'm going to support her. So Shane had put that up front right away. Kyle was, it didn't show it. He just was not going to budge on that. And so it wasn't necessarily like, I need a religious, crazy Christian, like off the deep end. I've been there, done that. I was just in a point where I had to have someone at least believes, you know what I'm saying? And is open to it. Kyle had changed his mind, but it was already a too, little too late because it wasn't just the faith thing. That was definitely the foundation of it not being able to work. But there was unfortunately a lot seen that was not shown of Kyle that had happened. And such as I am not going to stay right now. Oh, come on. Um, I know everyone already is like out to out everybody. I'm not like that. I'm going to keep it private. Um, but you, but you're there's kind a of bunch a, of character flaws. You're kind of implying that you, if you, that you would talk shit if you felt comfortable, that there's shit to talk. Yeah. So I'm not going to like portray it to the world. And I, again, like, it's it's doesn't matter. It's it's, it's moot at this point. Um, it just wasn't. There was just other you. character. Okay. Yeah, there's just other character flaws that I saw that I did not want in my husband, and unfortunately, that was not shown on the sh- on the show because again, there were such limited to how many how many hours this uh, show is, but it wasn't shown of like other reasons why. But religion, it wasn't. I hate the word religion. Also, I'm more of a person of like relationship. Okay, clearly, I'm not the perfect Christian, and. That wasn't the only reason. It was just at the end of the day, like it was just a deal breaker. I, I get it. Like if yeah, you know, if if you whether you're going to church every Sunday or four times a year, if 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 that's how you want to raise your kids, or you still believe in God, and if you're dating a 
an atheist who maybe is not only unwilling to go, but even mocks the fact that you believe that's a, that would be a challenge. Exactly. There is such a lack yeah. of respect. You know what I'm saying? Like, and don't get me wrong. I love everybody. I know so, I have so many friends that are atheists. Okay. But there's a mutual respect there. And Kyle did not respect me at the end of the day, but that wasn't shown. I almost felt like he was mocking your Yeah. A hundred percent. Thank okay. you for saying that. Cause that's exactly how I felt. And help me like fill in the timeline too, because I, I, I actually like criticized Kyle for this. It because it, it it came it came across as well weird at best. But after you broke up with him and you ghosted him, or it looked like you ghosted him, <laughs> and and you uh, are in Chicago, he was just like, "Well, I'll just go back to Chicago." And it's like he didn't understand that you broke up. And I think I don't know if that played a role in like this edit or whatever, but. It was kind of bizarre how it's it's almost surprising to hear you tell us that you actually very clearly sat him down or said, "Hey, this is not working for me. I'm going to go." You know, how many times? Like, I don't the- know, like how many times or different ways I could show that it wasn't going to work, and I'm the one who's getting criticized. Which but I did, will but, own you, it. but not show, but you, but just to be clear, you specifically said, "Kyle, I'm done." Because how did he, how did you guys, how did you introduce him to your parents then? Because he, he's like giving this interview, like this ITM, this in the moment interview of being, it was kind of, I forgot his, like, I don't remember exactly what he said, but it came across as delusional in the sense of like, I was like, bro, like at the time we didn't know that you broke up with him. You just left. But even still, it's kind of like. The writing's on the wall. It was like, I don't think she likes you, man. And he kind of had this, well, I'll just make it work. I'll, I'll, I'll get her to see, you know what she just sees the, let's just give her some space. It was kind of like this weird, like not understanding energy, but it's even more weird now after hearing you say that you actually specifically told him, I want to break this off and I'm done. Yeah. I said, I couldn't do it. I like, I needed, I like, I can't do this whole situation. Again, my biggest this is what I do own. And I could have avoided a lot further drama and mess and like chaos that I do not need as if I should have just said no to Kyle and followed my gut and I didn't. And Are so you in the pods even, or, or later on when he proposed, well, cause even before he proposed, I was like, I don't know how this is going to work. And again, I was trying to be open-minded because this is an experiment. This was like what, 10 days of like people were acting like this was like years. And like, again, this was 10 days in the pods. I had said, like, I don't know if this is going to work. And then I don't know if you know, but like during the reveal, I had intention. I'm like, you know what? I don't know if we should be doing this. And when I saw him, it was like, oh my God, this is real. My parents are going to freak out. Not that like my parents are like, gonna, I'm going to do what I'm going to do. But it just was very even more real when I saw him in the flesh. And then like, I was trying to stay open-minded and I like didn't want to hurt him. And it sounds so stupid, but I, I just should have said no. I should have said no. Yeah, you're caught up in the moment. I get it. How, I will say watching it, like, you know, again, obviously a lot of my, well, my reality TV experience comes from being on The Bachelor. So it's- You it's, know, it, right. Sure. But it's also just a very different show. And I, as watching it, I was wondering, I can, I totally can understand how any sort of uh, controlled environment, and this is a very, con- the pods are a very controlled environment, can elicit like these crazy emotions. Like I, I can buy that, but how much, and I, again, maybe for you, and you kind of alluded to it, and I'm sure you've talked to a lot of your castmates and peers, like how much of the engagement was I'm truly in love and how much of it was like, I don't know, fuck it. Let's, let's just continue the experiment and see what happens. Because some, like, I thought it was fascinating the show, like specifically had you guys referred to, to it as an experiment, which I thought was kind of fascinating, right? Because on The Bachelor, they call it a journey and they're, they don't even pretend that it's weird. Like they're just like, no, this is normal. <laughs> <laughs> and at least love is blind. They're like, no, this is clearly in a, a, a weird experiment, which I thought kind of like brought a level of like uh, not a sanity to it. But nevertheless, I'm curious, how many people do you think said yes to an engagement more based off of just continue the experiment rather than like, I would, I want to get engaged? Oh, that's a good question. I think half the couples were truly like falling in love. Okay. I do. I remember because I was really close to Danielle and Nick, both of them. 
like Nick was one of my like Todd besties. And so we would purposely put each other as our top three, just so we could talk like conspiracies, like life news, like everything. And, um, I was encouraging the whole time because I saw them both really falling in love. And I was like, oh my gosh, like this is amazing. So, actually, so that's definitely an example. I'm really curious about that because so you developed this like friendship with Nick. Right? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. you couldn't see them. So why, why didn't that turn into like any type of romantic More? feelings? Yeah. Because like what, if, what <laughs> was it? Really funny. So the, okay, I'm not kidding you. We, I, I was just with Nick and Danielle yesterday and we were laughing because Nick the first day was like, Oh yeah, I've been to your church. He goes, Shada, eh, I will never be that guy. I'm like putting a friendship like right away. He just knew that I was not, he was not the guy that I was going to be wanting for my husband. And so it was immediately like he friend zoned. It was, it was really funny. And so we were like, well, we enjoy talking to each other. It's definitely a front vibe though. And so it was, yeah, it was just one of those things. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> who do you hang out with you? Nick and Danielle. Uh, who else are, yeah, yeah, you, yeah. are you close with? I love Deeps. She's amazing. Uh, it was it was hilarious because we just filmed the reunion, and it sucks because like we genuinely all like like each other, right? It's just obviously drama and like filming got in the way. But um, yeah, I definitely I still talk to Deeps. I'm really close with Danielle and Nick. Um, we talked to everybody, Mallory. Honestly, everyone's great. I have a question um, because yes. you said you didn't want to stir the pot. You don't want to spill the tea. Would you ever at any point, or is this just like so far behind you now that you're never gonna give us the juicy? I I teeter totter every day, but I'm just I just want to take the high road, and I, I just like again like I was not portrayed in a good light at all, and like I just like want to like move forward, and we'll see if people get to know the real me. But um, I don't know yet. I think I'm gonna keep it private though as of right now. Does this make sense? I probably don't make sense right now. <laughs> a little wishy washy. I appreciate the the moral conflict you know people spill tea they sometimes get praised for it and people spill tea and sometimes they're exactly they're, I, I think i'm just in a negative light and it doesn't matter what i say because it's not going to change anybody's opinion and that's okay it's none of my business what people think of me and there's no there's no you and shane possibilities <laughs> no, no 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 we were like again like we were like they definitely like it was definitely shown to be dragged on much longer than what it really was with shane um, me and Shane were like cordial friends. We're cool, but that's it. Why, why did, why did, uh, Kyle meet your family? That's a good question. Um, when we got back to Chicago, I agreed to meet up with them. And again, it wasn't shown why, but he was just like, it was kind of like one of those things where I'm like, okay, am I giving it all during this experiment? And I go, I know when my family will meet him, it will like confirm what I need to do. Does that make sense? And it was kind of like, let me meet your family. Let me do this. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, okay, which is a big deal to me. And looking back on it, like I don't bring men home just to meet. Like I, I get, that's a serious thing to me. And so it was one of those things where I'm like, okay, if he meets my family, I know what I'm going to have to do. So it was kind of like a confirmation. Yeah. Well, like you already did it, but you were almost wanted that kind of validation from your family. It sounds like. Exactly. That you exactly. Exactly. Made the, made the right decision. Um, yes. Oh, we <laughs> we're, we have a chance to talk to Deep Deep, but uh, a, a lot of the conversations are going on around uh, Shake and Deep D's ending, and more specifically, the comments that Shake made throughout the season. I think a lot of people, and maybe you can confirm this or not, but like a lot of people suspected that you also weren't physically attracted to Kyle, and yet mm -hmm. you you chose not to elaborate on that and shake did and it's like it's this weird thing right because the show love is blind there's this conversation around how much does physical appearance matter and shake decided to what seemed like every episode comment about dp's physical appearance and what was the reason well a was did your physical attraction or lack thereof in kyle play a role in your decision and 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 if so what was your reason not to, you know, get into that if that was the case, right? It, did it, was it for the same reasons why we are now criticizing Shake for, you know, what he did? That's a good question. And actually, I've been asked that before. Can I be honest with you? It actually Please. has nothing to do with his physical appearance okay. at all. Um, I don't think Shake, I don't think Kyle's a bad looking guy at all. And again, like, I think someone's it's his personality preference. Can, it's a, yeah. It's his preference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually, like, again, if someone can make me laugh and they have a good personality and they have a good character and heart, that plays way more. 
You know what I'm saying? Don't get me wrong. Like you have to have some physical attraction, but that didn't, that wasn't the case with Kyle. Okay. So it just wasn't the case. And yeah. or do you have any thoughts on the, the shake and, and deep D situation on like how, how shake handled it? So it sucks. Cause like, I don't know what happened that they didn't show. So I don't know if there was more to the, the situation, but from what I saw, it's sad because DT is such a beautiful person. I don't want to judge Shake because again, people have judged me and it wasn't the case at all, but he's blatantly vocal about how he handled things with Deeps and like how he felt like the whole attraction thing. Um, it's just sad because DT is such a beautiful soul and she just deserves, like, honestly, she deserves the world. Any, <laughs> any final thoughts? Uh, what, anything you want to say? In terms of uh, you know leaving our audience with uh, the, Shana's fin- final thoughts on, on the world, <laughs> oh, yeah. there are so many more than just like a third. Um, there's a lot I could say, but again, I just want people to know that the character was that was portrayed. It was not me, and I'm not a homewrecker. And uh, just be kind to people. You have no idea until you go through reality television. And I definitely be humbled, and I will never judge another reality star ever again. Well, that's final that's, thoughts. And are you single dating? What's your what's what's next for your love life? I'm actually in a relationship. Oh, yeah. It's pretty serious. Yeah, no, not I'm, from I'm really the Love Is Blind cast. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, he's been awesome. Nothing but a support. He's been great throughout, throughout the whole situation. So I'm oh, happy. That's good. So he didn't. Yeah, he didn't get into. He didn't. This experience didn't alter the relationship at all. No, actually, I was like laughing. I'm like, what a time to be in a relationship! Like those men sliding through the DMs. <laughs> oh, are you getting? No. Are you getting the? Are you getting the slides? A lot of like pro like English soccer players. <laughs> yeah, pro. Oh, Allie's jealous of you. Yeah. Whoa. Uh, I, yeah, I'll you can be a wag. <laughs> I got you, girl. <laughs> Feel well, free to forward them along. <laughs> I gotta say, like you know, starting a relationship like you are, Shayna. All while this is getting aired is is it's quite uh, the test of a relationship. I mean, it's uh, you're going through this kind of emotional crisis oh a little bit, right? And it's been a crisis, and and that's that's tough to it's tough to be a partner with anyone going through an emotional crisis and for anything. And then you get it. He right? doesn't know you all that well, and and yet it seems like this is the relationships. It could be a, a nice. We laugh nice, because nice test for uh, it. Because it, yeah, yeah, it's 100%. not easy. I don't, it's not. I don't want to take for granted it's not what easy. you're going through while starting a relationship. All right. Well, Shana, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, I appreciate it. Best of luck on your relationship. Thank you so and in much. Life. Thank you for listening to me. Oh, my pleasure. Thanks for coming on. And uh, if uh, hopefully the people listening, you have a, a you know, just a little more empathy for for Shana. And stay thank out, you. Stay, well, stay out of her DMs if she if you don't have anything nice to say. Um, they might, the DMs have been nicer than the comments. I'll I'll tell you that much. But anyway, it's fine. All will be well. This too shall pass. Well, best <laughs> of luck. Uh, thanks for being a good sport and answering all the questions. You. Uh, Thank you guys. Thanks for listening to me. All right, take care. <laughs> all right. Well, that was Shana. What are what are your two's reactions to hearing Shana's uh, answers to some of our questions? Has your do you have a little bit more empathy or understanding? What were your thoughts? I thought it was very humanizing. I thought it was wild that we got an exclusive that, well, that she's, she's in a dating. relationship. She is dating. Exciting. <laughs> you heard it here first. Good for us. We're like breaking a news. newspaper. Break, yeah. <laughs> breaking breaking news. But yeah, I mean, she seems like a normal person. And know? I thought it was so interesting that she did not want to get down the weeds and really expose anything because of how she's been treated by people watching the show. I just thought that was an interesting. Like yeah. she could very much be like, F everybody, like I've gone through the ringer, let me expose everyone else. But instead, she's very much like, no, not going to go there. It kind of implied that she thought Kyle was kind of a jerk, right? Yeah, that was my I mean, it apl- implied that there was shit to be stirred. Yeah, uh, or that it was more two sided than it was ever presented. Yeah, because I mean, the way it was presented, like I said, it was, it was presented that she left in the <laughs> middle of the night. <laughs> like a night. thief in the night. <laughs> <laughs> and then showed up, tried to break up Shane and Natalie. And and then like, I really thought that whole Kyle, I thought that was weird on Kyle for him to, and it's even more weird now after hearing Shayna because it kind of gave an uncomfortable, like, she broke up with you, dude. Why are you not mm-hmm. like acknowledging that? And it, was, and it wasn't like, because when they aired Kyle, it wasn't like, oh, 
I, I want to talk to her and see if she's willing to uh, give me another shot. It was more like, she just doesn't know it yet. I just have to give her some time. She'll come around. It was a very, it was weird energy, I thought. I don't yeah. know if anyone else mm -hmm. picked up on that. All right, and up next, the, the, the interview I think most of you have been waiting for, the wonderful Deep D. I like to think of her as America's current sweetheart. Um, a lot of questions uh, that we have for her uh, around Shake in terms of uh, has she talked to him since? Has he apologized for anything? What was it like watching it back? What was it like watching him back? You know, maybe, maybe, maybe it wasn't as bad as we saw. You know, like we talked to to Shayna. You know, maybe Dipti even has I don't know, maybe empathy for Shake. We don't. I think it'll be a very telling her answers. So let's get to Dipti. Dipti, welcome. Hi, we're, thanks for having we're me. We're so excited to have you. Uh, I guess first question, how does it feel to be America's sweetheart? <laughs> Honestly, I'm in awe that that's the, that's the impression I'm giving out to uh, the world or America. But I mean, honestly, I'm honored. I'm honored that um, I got that title. I don't feel like I deserve it because I'm just a regular person, just being myself. But it's pretty cool. It was enjoyable watching your journey, especially at the end. I mean, at times it was, it was challenging watching your journey too, just because it seemed like just tough to watch just the way we got to see things from, from Shake. Uh, there's been a lot of comments and opinions about that relationship from the time it started to how it finished. But I wanted to start with, you know, where are you at with your point of view with your relationship with Shake from the time you started watching it uh, to the finale? What was that like for you? And how are you feeling now? I think tough is a good word to use because, you know, after filming had wrapped, I was under the impression that we could at least, you know, celebrate this friendship that we built because we've gone through something so insane and like no one else understands. So, you know, I thought I could build this friendship with him and I tried that. And, you know, as the days unfolded after filming had wrapped. I just started to see more of his true character. And, you know, every time I hung out with him, he had an issue with at least one person in the room. And, you know, it was just tough. You know, he was very outward about his dating. And, you know, we had just ended this you know, engagement essentially. So it was kind of tough and I distanced myself. And, you know, before the show aired, we weren't that close. I didn't really talk to him much anymore, but after watching it unfold, I mean, oh man, it's so upsetting to see because I thought this was my friend and you don't talk about your friend this way, let alone your fiance, you know, it, it's one thing if someone's not physically attracted to you, but how you talk about them and what you say to your friends and family makes a huge difference. You know, I think it solidifies that my approach of like leaving him alone and letting him live his life is the best um, choice that I ever made. Yeah. So I didn't even know. So after, after the wedding, after you decided to choose yourself, which we loved, by the way, I mean, my favorite, favorite moment was the shot of your mom before she even like came to you, like you saw like her pride. It was, it was so like transparent. It was so awesome. And so tell your mom, we said, hi, we, we love that from your mom. But so I was, I'm, I'm almost just surprised to hear you say that even after that, you, you, there was an attempt for you guys to still be in each other's lives afterwards. Yeah. We wanted to celebrate our unique love story, even if it was just a friendship, you know, because we went through such a bonding experience and, you know, of course I wanted to maintain a relationship of you know of some sort with him because we have this bond but yeah it was just hard and tumultuous because just seeing how he acts on social media and even in person I was like wow how could I have been so wrong about someone's character yeah. you know so what mm -hmm. did you get a head up a heads up from production or the show at all in terms of what you might expect to to watch but because like, you know, it was interesting watching it, right? The, the show is called Love is Blind, right? So, so much of the premise is about like f making a connection with someone you don't get to see. And there's this kind of clearly unspoken thing of what are these two people going to think or feel about each other when they see e each other? You know, being on a real any type of reality TV show, like the audience can be very critical. The people will make comments. And I remember like going on 
and people would make comments about my hair or my appearance or like, and I, I created a lot of like insecurities when I was like, I never, I never thought I had any insecurities about this stuff. And I was like, oh my God, I'm, I'm hideous. But it's a very, uh, quite another thing to go through this journey with someone and have them talk. Oh, and it was like every episode with Shake. It was like this, okay, we get it. Fine. You're like, it wasn't what you expected, but the way he continued to beat it, did you get any heads up at all? Or did you have to watch that like we watched it uh, in real time on the show? Yeah, I watched it in real time. Oh. Um, I mean, I knew like to my face, he would say, I'm not physically attracted to you. He, which, he would. Yeah. And I mean, in that, not in those harsh of words, he would just say, oh, we're lacking chemistry or there's something missing between us. He kind of sugarcoated it. But then when he would talk behind my back and I had no idea, I watched it with the rest of the world and I was so disappointed. Honestly, uh, there are no words <laughs> and I'm pretty sure he got a good at it. So mm, really, just, you think he got, you got, Oh, I'm, I, I've heard from castmates that he said way worse. Um, and you know, I think, yeah, he got a really good edit. <laughs> so uh, if that says something. <laughs> yeah, it says a lot. How many of your castmates do you talk uh, to? And like, I think a lot of one one conversation people had a tough time with was uh, Shake's conversation with with Jarrett. It was kind of like this awkward thing, and quite honestly, it didn't seem like Jarrett was kind of laughing along with Shake, and it was kind of a bad look uh, on Jarrett. In fact, if anyone, for all the kind of you know, Shane's gotten some heat, but when Shane and Shake talked, Shane was kind of like, bro. And in a weird way, I had tried to get him to like change his approach to uh, uh, his relationship with you. Did, did you have any exceptions or take any exceptions to some of the other uh, guys or castmates that uh, Shake was talking to? Yeah, honestly, um, all of the cast had my back with Shake. They, they kind of saw the type of person he was. And I think the editing kind of showed Jared in a weird, like laughy mood there. But Jared actually specifically pulled me aside and was like, I don't think you should marry him. He doesn't speak highly of you. And uh, Shane the whole time protected me. So um, I'm thankful for the cast. And, you know, they just had my back because they saw that I was a good person. I, I actually cared and took care of Shake so much during filming. His anxiety levels were so high. I like calmed him down. I would walk his dog, make him breakfast, like pack his lunches. Like I, I just put so much of my time and energy into that relationship. And so to see that he treated me that way and talked about me that way, it's just like disheartening. And, you know, it's kind of sad. It sucks. Yeah, no, we we agree. Your uh, brother had a lot to say. Uh, it, it came out, had some harsh words. And I'm, I assume you must be very grateful that he said that or you, you have, uh, after talking to you all or now, I wasn't sure when we would have, you know, I wasn't sure what you thought, but it sounds like you're, thrilled he came to your defense and, and said those things because it was at the time I was like oh shit he there must be more to the story because it was uh, some pretty harsh harsh things he said I know and it's hard for I think it's hard for my brother and my family because I am I do put like I try to see the good in people all the time and you know clearly it gets me in trouble and they're always trying to protect me and they you know would be like you know I don't know if this is the person for you he shouldn't be saying these types of things but I always gave Shake the benefit of the doubt and my family also watched all of this for the first time over, right? And so they were livid because we welcomed him into our family. My brother reached out to him and, and would be like, hey, I know you have no siblings. So if you ever need anything, like I'm here for you as a brother. So like we just gave him so much love and he gave us, like we, we reciprocated with like saying the harshest words. Like it's cruel, honestly. Th this show going on this experience and we opened up with calling you America's sweetheart. Uh, what, what was like the biggest takeaway for you? Like, I mean, again, it must, it must have been so hard. I mean, I mean you, you know, this, you're beautiful, you're mm -hmm. wonderful. E everyone, uh, everyone thinks that but nevertheless, like it's when you, when you watch yourself and you, I don't care who you are, you know, right. If someone, if you were watching a show, think of anyone, like, you know, Ty if Tyler Cameron, everyone, everyone <laughs> thinks Tyler Cameron's beautiful. We all, everyone, he's a universally adored for his looks. <laughs> And, and if he went on a show and there was one person just constantly being like, I don't know, I'm just, I'm just not attracted. I just don't like, just don't like his face. I don't like this. It would just be really, you know, honestly, like 
hard to watch. And yet I'm wondering, how were you able to overcome that? And where do you kind of stand now? Was there something to, to learn for that? Or was that kind of, did it feel unnecessarily cruel and you're still enjoying the adoration you're getting now? Or was there something that you've been able to take away as like a positive moment despite having to endure watching that crap like every fucking episode it's like it's almost he turned out like all right what is fucking shake gonna say about me today um exactly. it sucks it sucks to hear but where where mm -hmm. do you stand now what is your per perspective of your experience on the show i honestly am so so grateful for the show because i think you know my whole life i've been trying to build this self-esteem and confidence in myself and the show taught me that it does not matter what other people think of you as long as you have self-worth and self-respect and confidence, you know, it's a projection of them and not a reflection of you. So I honestly, I'm just grateful that I can, you know, stand proud and say that I love myself no matter what, especially what shake things, it does not matter to me because he clearly has a lot of issues and things that he needs to work on. And, you know, he was projecting that onto me the whole time because he saw me as a nice person and he thought I would be in his life forever as a friend. So he took advantage of that. But, you know, for me, I'm just so happy because after filming had wrapped, you know, my confidence was shaken a little bit and I worked on myself. I kind of like stepped away, you know, grounded myself again, started meditating and like just working out and feeling good about myself. And I'm in such a better place today. So rewatching it, yes, it hurt. But at the same time, I just am in awe and like, I'm actually so proud of myself because I'm no longer in that mental state. I'm actually happy. I'm ready to move forward and just, you know, put good out into the world. That's really what my goal is now. When I, people found out that you were coming on, uh, they submitted some questions and a couple questions people had about, and I honestly quite enjoyed too. It's just like, I'm not familiar, that that familiar with like Indian culture. I thought it was very fascinating, mm -hmm. the, the conversations around arranged marriages and love is blind because it just um, there that almost like weird synergy did you yeah. feel um in any type of pressure you know you 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 and shake both talked about you know never dating someone from your culture before you only dated white guys you you mentioned shake said the same thing did this affect that experience did, did shake gave, give a, like a bad taste in your mouth for like being open to other like indian men or is that just more on shake because i i've there are, I got a lot of questions about like, ask her about this and her experience with dating Shake and how that kind of maybe shaped your perspective going forward on your dating life, with, especially within your culture. Yeah. No, honestly, it's not like I was avoiding dating an Indian man. It's just, I didn't grow up with very many Indians around me. Um, so like, I just never kind of had the opportunity to, I guess. Like I can't compare my experience to him and apply it to all Indian men. Absolutely not. I'm not closed off to any race whatsoever. So I'm like, I'm here, open, ready to find my soulmate, um, regardless of the race. Have you heard from Shake since this has been airing? Has he, has he ever reached out or even, even tried whether you were, you know, it would make sense that you weren't even interested in talking to him, but has he even mm -hmm. attempted to say, hey, I'm embarrassed for my comments, et cetera, et cetera? No, it's actually kind of um, frustrating because even throughout, if Shake ever needed me, I've like been there for him. You know, sometimes he calls me when he watched an episode or something and he's like, I'm really upset about this. I'm like, what's wrong? Like, I'm the one who should be upset. Wait, but, so wait, he, he would call you after the episodes and talk about shit he was upset with without even commenting about the shit he was saying about you? Honestly, after finale, he tried to call me and you know what? It, it was just embarrassing. And even a reunion, you guys will see it. I, I tried to talk to him, but he just has, he lacks so much self-awareness and he thinks he's like a character on a TV show. Like this is real life and real people's feelings. And it's just frustrating. And he's constantly trying to blow me up now, like, and posting pictures of me from back after filming had wrapped. And like, he's kind of like, insinuating on social media that we are like amicable or we're that cool. we're friends. It's like, oh no, and we're it's cool. just frustrating. Yeah. yeah. And I'm I'm trying not to engage because that's what he wants. He wants my energy, even if it's negative or positive. He wants something from me. And you know, I'm just like, I've I've had it. I'm done. I've had enough with him. So you kind of almost felt like he, you know, coming from Bachelor Nation there for the wrong reason, so to speak, that he was 
more into the TV show aspect than a sincerity in terms of making this kind of human connection? Exactly. I mean, you'll see in the finale when I say, I also say to my mom, let's celebrate because, you know, I wanted to celebrate this experience and this friendship that we had built. It's unique to us and it bonds us. But he was celebrating his friends. He wanted to party. He didn't, it, it clearly shows that he didn't care about me. He cared about the situation. When we first met Shake, we, it was, I think the overwhelming opinion was uh, the douchebag, the DJ, the whole, you know, girl on the shoulders concert, like, uh. Mm-hmm. And then at, at your expense, as he talked about like, oh, well, I see, you know, she's such a good person. You know, it, it was annoying, at, you know, again, at your expense, having him to talk about overcoming, you know, like his f- lack of physical attraction. But you wanted, to, you, it's like you almost wanted to try to give him the benefit of the doubt, like, oh, maybe this guy is growing. And mm-hmm. I, I really, it was when, when you left the altar and they went back to shake, I was really hoping some sort of like, you know what, I fucked up. You know, like I, I had this amazing person in front of me. I was about to propose. I'm heartbroken. You know what? She does deserve better. She made the right choice. Or I have to respect her choice at all. But like I lost something special and I realize that now. Like some humility from him. Like he showed no humility. And it was it was a really bu- it, I think for most people, and I don't I'm I'm curious if you felt the same way, and it sounds like you do, that it kind of showed us that Shake was the person we first met. On, on episode one and not the person we were wondering if he was trying to be, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And that's exactly it for me. You know, I try to, I try to see the good in him and, you know, despite my cast members and my family telling me, you know, you don't really talk like that. Um, you know, but you know, I thought I saw some depth in him And so when we would talk privately, you know, he would compliment me a lot and say, you know, I'm kind of learning from you and yada, yada. So I thought there could be some progress in his mindset. But sadly, uh, I think like it takes so long to change, right? He's about to be 34 this year to to kind of like rewire your brain when you've been thinking a certain way for your whole life. Three weeks is not going to be enough time to change. And I think I was naive to think that he would. Um, and yeah, it it just takes time, but it starts with self-awareness. If you don't think you have a problem, then how are you going to fix anything? And right now he still hasn't apologized to me personally or to my family. So, you know, for him to just be on social media saying, oh, I know I have made mistakes. Well, the first thing in admitting that you made a mistake is to maybe apologize to the person that you fucked with. I mean, I shouldn't say I'm shocked. I don't know the guy at all, but I'm, it's really disappointing. It's not that hard to be like, hey, even, even if he wanted to make an excuse about like, I didn't mean to say that, or it's not what I meant, he could at a minimum saying he didn't, he had no sense of, to your point, self-awareness to empathize what it would be like for you to hear something like that. You know, I'm, exactly. I, I can imagine what it'd be like for him to go on a show and every episode, someone and people have a right to not be attracted to someone. That's not the point. Absolutely. Right? But like, it was Absolutely. just like, hey, I'm sorry you had to hear that. That wasn't my intention. I got caught up in the moment. I didn't realize. I should not have said that. It must have been really hard to hear. I am sorry. Obviously, you know, you're, you know, some, something like that. Something. It was like, bro. And you yeah. no, nothing like that. That's so disappointing. Nothing. Not one thing. It's always about him. And I'm like, all right, I just, I'm done with this relationship. There's Uh, nothing here. Well, uh, I only have one final question for you uh, before we let you go. And and I think uh, it's a burning question people want to know. One, uh, is there anything going on between you and Sal? And two, if not, (laughs) are your DMs open? What's your love life looking now? Uh, Where where are we at? How, How are things going? Yeah. I mean, things are good. I mean, honestly, I'm working on myself and I've built so many amazing friendships. Sal and I are not together. We're just, we're just friends. Um, I think it's funny, the speculation, but uh, all I can say is tune into reunion and maybe you'll find out a little bit more. (laughs) What a tease. What a tease. All right. Well, Thank you for your time, Deep D. Uh, we wish you nothing but the best. Uh, we no doubt that you are going to be uh, turning a lot of guys away if you already aren't already. Um, 
It's like, but the DMs are open. So like the DMs are open. The DMs are open. Still single, but okay, you're still single. (laughs) Slide. Be polite. Be a gentleman. Say hi. Uh, And uh, thank you for uh, letting us follow your journey, Deep D. And um, despite what you had to go through, you were definitely, I I think, honestly, like a real inspiration to a lot of people. I love how you said to choose yourself, and really love that moment from your mom. It was really really great. And uh, so many people get in these relationships and uh, we try to make it work. We feel like we've invested in something and we will look the other way when things don't feel right. And um, I'm so glad that you've you've trusted your gut and uh, chose yourself and uh, you seem like you're all the better for it. Absolutely. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me. I really appreciate that. Oh, likewise. You did us a favor. Mm -hmm. So thank you for taking the time. We know you're uh, real busy right now and it's been a lot of fun on our end. So thank you so much. Awesome. Thank you. All right. Take care, Deepti. Take care. All right. Bye-bye. Well, wild stuff from Deepti. Wow. She's wonderful. Not good, Shake. He got a good Not, edit. Yeah, that, that is that what was, she said. A good edit, people. When she said that, she almost caught me off guard. I was like, what do you mean he got a good edit? I loved watching Nick's face throughout that entire interview. It was my favorite. I was just like, oh, oh, he got a good edit. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Like, It, it didn't register at first. And we also heard a, a, a producer who was on the call confirmed that that is, the, uh, that is indeed the biggest takeaway from all of the cast. Not just Deep D. This is... Not just deep. Deep is not. This is not a scorned person who's throwing shake under the bus. It is everyone in the cast thinks unanimous. Shake, unani- I was. We were told unanimously. Shake got a good at it, and that is the takeaway from the entire cast of Love Is Blind too. Thanks to Deep D and Shannon for all that insight. Let's get to our mediation call. How's it going? Good. Hey, hi. How's it going I'm you? good. Or you guys are in different locations, so that's why you guys, uh, for audience, why uh, they were uh, talking over each other, not because they're fighting. <laughs> All right, wh- who's who? My name is Liz. I'm 33. I'll be 34 next week. Okay, and you, sir? I'm Mike. I'm 34. Okay. Who wants to start and uh, share the, uh, the issue? Um, I'll just keep it basic. Um, I am somewhat recently divorced. It's been a couple of years almost. Um, and Mike is my first boyfriend after my divorce and he's, and I think I said this before, really great, super, our relationship is really good. It's probably the healthiest one I've ever had for being as young as I am, which I appreciate. And we do a really good job of communicating most of the time. I have two daughters. They are almost 14 and eight and he has no children. So it's been kind of a transition in that part of our relationship, just learning, going from pretty much taking care of himself to helping me with them and being involved in that capacity with kids. And for the most part, it's really, really good. We have an issue that kind of recurs where 14 and eight are tough ages, 14 specifically for a girl. And she has a lot of issues (laughs) that I have to deal with and we butt heads and get in arguments and things that typically happen with a mom and a daughter. And when he's there, he has this drive to help people constantly, which is a good thing. But because he wants to help, he sort of interjects a lot in those types of discussions. And I think it's just learning. We're looking for some advice for how I can maybe make him feel validated and heard for what he thinks without disrupting those types of interactions, if that makes sense. Yeah. How long have you been dating for? A uh, year. Oh, for a year. year. Okay. A while now. And as far as like you being divorced, like it's it's like that that like that's over and done with. It's not like uh, we've moved on. There's no like residual like elements of like the divorce or anything like that in terms of dealing with your ex husband. And um, no, not really. Um, I my ex husband and I have both came into our relationship as co parents, so we both had kids from a previous relationship and then share a daughter. So I actually have two exes um, with both of my daughters, which is complicated enough. Um, but no, they're not really, they're not an issue as far okay. as our relationship is concerned. We don't have residual problems or anything like that. And Mike, where, what's your perspective on, on the situation? Pretty accurate, but I'd love, I'd love to hear it from, from you just because it's, 
yeah, I'd love to hear it from your Yeah, that, I never like to sit back and kind of watch the situation. I like to find a time to you know put in my two cents. You're, you're a guy. Uh, <laughs> I know. <laughs> we all have that just like inherent need of like, I have something to say. Um, yes. Yeah. I always think I have a point of view or a better option or just you know a different way to see things. Does it matter what Mike's take is or you would just like, is it, do you get more frustrated if he's like taking your daughter's side or is it about like, is he almost trying to mediate like a fight between the two of you? Like what is the thing that seems, feels the most triggering? So the thing that I think the most triggering to me is probably twofold. First off, he does a really good job of backing me for the most part. Like he's a lot of times I think his intentions are, really, really good. Like he's trying to back me up and be like, yes, you should listen to your mom because X, Y, Z. But unfortunately what tends to happen because my older daughter specifically has had a really, not a great relationship with my ex-husband sure. um, who I was with for 10 years, a lot of her life. And so she has some residual, I think, I don't want to call it trauma, but some past experiences with that. So she doesn't want, she like when she's upset, she doesn't want to hear him talk at all. And yeah. she likes him. They have a good relationship. Again, they're still building. It's only been a year. It's going to take more time than that, especially for a 14-year-old who hardly likes me most of the time. She turns kind of. And and because he's even talking, she listens even less. And she sort of checks out. And she's like, who are you? Like, why are you? Like, yeah. she's not rude. She's got good manners. But she's still, like, it just, it sort of derails the conversation, in my opinion. And that's how, like, kind of, it feels to me like I'm trying to get a point across and while he's trying to help, then I have to, sh then I find myself and this is me admitting my own fault, shushing him <laughs> in front of my kids, which yeah. I don't want to do. Like I never want to make him feel like I don't appreciate his input because I do, but I think it's finding the right time to give it. If that makes sense. It's on, you said it's an ongoing issue. You you've asked Mike to, to not Mike, what's stopping you from, from, from maybe picking a different time to interject? I have learned over the last few months to not say anything or maybe come in later. I guess it's kind of hard. It's just going <laughs> to take, take some uh Are you like in the room with them? Or like, are you able to like walk outside? Cause I, I mean, it's a real thing. I don't yeah. know if our DNA as guys, like problem solvers. I love how Steve Harvey, Steve, I saw Steve Harvey say this once in a talk show where they were, and, and he acknowledged <laughs> that men try to be fixers. And he said, like, listen, the good news, like, yeah, we, as men, I think we all need to work on that. But you have a real problem when men stop trying to fix it, you know, when they're like, you know, I don't even care. Now, is that an excuse to like never learn? And, and and pick our battles and realize that maybe we're not always meant to be, you know, the knight in shiny armor or the hero or or and that and I think that's, that's something that us men struggle with the most is just because we have the right solution doesn't mean we need to say it when we say it. And I think that's something I've trust me, Mike, I've had to I've had to learn this too. And I I still I learned that I have to learn this. I mean, I have a show where people call in for my advice. So imagine when I'm out in the real world or in, in my relationship and and I feel like I have something helpful to say. Not always not always like wanted, you know. Uh it works on this show. People call in and ask, you know, but I I've had to learn that if they if they're not asking, it can be kind of a, a annoying. Um I I agree with that. I always if me and Liz are having a argument or a disagreement i think i am right a hundred percent and then it ends up being most of the time she is right yeah but I, I think it's also too like even if you are in fact right it's just a matter of there's a time to be right and there's a time to be quiet <laughs> i've learned I in relationships <laughs> i mean like and and thankfully like sometimes nally's a couple times she's been like i I'm not asking for your help. I'm asking you to listen. And there's some things like I think as men we have to work on to like sometimes people just want to vent and part of our role is to not always do that. And it, I think it's just, I don't know, it's fascinating that so it's like a, a generally a thing that a lot of men struggle with. 
I think maybe to help help you out, because um, it sounds like you recognize that you just need to like not do it as much. Mm-hmm. And I'm and I, and I said this not as a, I don't I'm not a parent I I don't know but like assuming this relationship continues to flourish you guys keep dating, and you mentioned that you have a good relationship with our daughter, I would hate for you to inadvertently, you know, make yourself the enemy of a 14 year old. You know, kind of like you said, where it's just like, it, it, you know, despite you maybe having a helpful solution in the moment, like chances are like her mom and her dad will like figure it out. But like, so, and I don't mean this to sound condescending, but she probably doesn't need your input, even if it is helpful. So it, I only say that because it might like help you bigger picture wise, just like pick your battles because I would rather have her daughter, especially if this relationship continues to flourish, think of you as someone, you know, be the ally where, you know, when she's mad at her mom and mad at her her dad, that she can come to you and be someone you still, that's when you give the advice. Because you know how sometimes in, in every relationship, and I'm sure you guys can relate, and doesn't, I, you'll be fighting with your partner, right? And and you'll say something. But, but if you'd only did X, Y, and Z, and then your partner in the middle of a fight will, will just like, completely dismiss it. That's crazy. That's nuts. How could you say that? And then like two days later, you'll be chill. You won't be fighting. And your friend will offer you a bit of advice that you'll go, oh, that's really, that's really helpful. And then you'll say that to your partner and your partner's like, I fucking said, that's what, I, that's what I said. I was saying that. What are you talking about? Like, I feel like every, right? You guys relate to this, that this happens all the time oh, yeah. in relationships. And so what I'm saying to you, Mike, is, be that friend, right? And it, it, and and being that person is is being that person at, at a different time when emotions aren't high, when 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 they don't want to hear from just another person how wrong they are. When we're in a fight, we're looking for allies. That's why we go to our friends to talk about our relationships and our partners, and we vent, and we seem to be more open to what they say because we assume that they're an ally. We don't assume that they're an adversary. And you're inadvertently making yourself an adversary to her daughter. And like you don't need you, you don't need to be, right? Because she'll figure it yeah. out. And so always, when you have I've that, always told her I wanted to be a best friend. Yeah. And someone they can rely on versus, you know, a parental figure, but you just keep you, finding myself trying to help. You gotta help learn how to bite your you gotta learn how to bite your tongue. And when you have that, like, I know the solution here, make a mental note. And 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 then build that rapport with her daughter, not right away, but like later on, you can say, hey, you know, and try to give her that advice about something that maybe isn't related to her mom. You know, like like giving advice, I've learned, it's all about someone's willingness to receive it. And if they're not, like, it's it's just useless. Like, you're just honestly wasting your breath by giving this solution that you know is right to the person who's not hearing it. It's... It just doesn't work. You, you, you might as well be talking to a wall. And so when you have, when you're, when, it, when it's happening, you know, we all, we hate, you know, what's, don't, don't we all hate repeating ourselves? Why is, why is repeating ourselves feel like running a mile? It does. Literal parental worst nightmare too. I know like coming, I know you don't have kids, but like, that doesn't get any better when you do. It no, gets ten times worse. I, I I hate repeating myself, and as someone who's absent-minded and aloof and in my thoughts, like Natalie has to repeat herself all the time, and I get my <laughs> so I get frustrated repeating myself. I can only imagine what I put my girlfriend through. We all hate repeating ourselves. So, Mike, as someone we as human beings, you won't have to repeat yourself. You can save that nugget of wisdom that you have, and you know you're right. Just save it for another time where. You're not in the middle of a fight, and that way you can feel a little bit more like you're you are helping. You can be that friend when you focus on being that friend. That you know, be the friend that she goes to to vent to her mom. You know, vent about her mom rather. And and you and she and you know, like she and she, you, you know, you're your Mike's going to have your back, so you're not worried about that. But she, you kind of just trick a fourteen year old into thinking. You know, they're, you're a friend, and, and and that's when you drop that wisdom or advice. I I don't know. I mean, I'm not a parent, but I feel like that might be a a, a better solution, and you'll just save yourself that energy. But be the person that gives the advice that 
uh, she's already hearing from her parents she doesn't want to listen to. Yeah, that's the, yeah, I think that's great that's the advice. solution that goes on in my mind, too. <laughs> yeah, well, just now you have to execute, man. Now you have to follow through. I'll release, I'll release the nugget when the emotions aren't so escalated. Also, like, yeah, step outside. I will, yeah. I will say last night, last night, there was a pretty highly emotional conversation between me and her. And I did notice, even just having talked about it and knowing we were coming on here to talk to you and all that, like, I did notice a little bit of a difference. Like, I thought, he's actively like I could tell because you didn't say anything or he didn't say anything like I could tell you were trying so I think that that's just like practicing that maybe and then me also checking myself and learning continuing to learn over and over again about talking about it later and not getting more frustrated in the moment yeah I mean the shushing sucks but hey I feel you like there's nothing like I mean, yeah I get it if you're being hard on yourself don't do that but I, I can appreciate not when you, when you're someone's asked trying to help, but it's not helpful. It can be very frustrating. Um, <laughs> but also, yeah, Mike, try to leave the room. Can you just like step outside or get your like make it easier on yourself? Don't try to have to bite your tongue. Just go somewhere else. You know, like lock myself in a room. Yeah, yeah. Go. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I, uh, I I look forward to being a father one day, but I I don't look forward to having teenagers. It um, it's a, a lot. The chapter of the baby books they leave out. <laughs> yeah, um, I don't know. I, hopefully, well, this was a little bit helpful, but I feel like we can turn this this problem into like an opportunity and just kind of change your approach a little bit. And it might be an opportunity oh. to kind of like again be that friend or bring you closer to her daughter and and um. You know, be someone she can go to when she's frustrated at her parents. And, you know, like, don't worry about, you know, solving that problem. Like, you know, actively choose to be the friend, you know, like, so that you're not, you're not going behind her back or anything like that. You're just, you're making it a safe, like, you want to make it a safe place for her. Because right now, mm -hmm. you're, you're making yourself kind of an adversary. And even okay. though you're trying to help and... You know, like build on that good rapport that you have and maybe even throw a little support her way when she's in a fight. Probably, maybe not. I don't know. But like you'd want, <laughs> you know, that that way you can try to at least give that advice when you have it, when she's willing to receive it, as opposed to a time where she's just completely shut off. Because whether you're 14 or, or 40, if you're not interested in hearing it, like it's not going to matter how smart it is, you know? Gandhi could show up at your door or Jesus. And if you're in a bad mood and you don't want to hear it, you'd just be like, nah, who asked you, Jesus? Um, like, <laughs> I feel like most of us would. Like, if we don't want to hear it, we're just, we're not going to, we're not going to be in the mood. So, all right, guys, I, uh, I appreciate I it. I think that's great. Uh, well, we thanks for calling Thank in. You. Hopefully this was helpful. Best of luck with everything. You guys seem like a wonderfully happy couple, and uh, hopefully we will be able to move through this uh, small, uh, you know, hiccup in the relationship. Yeah, we will. I think so. Thank you. All right, take care, guys. Well, thanks for listening, guys. We want to thank uh, Deep D and Shayna. We want to thank our couple for calling again. Don't forget to send your questions at asknickatcastme.com, cast with a K, for all your Ask Nick submissions and your mediation questions. Need those stories so we can keep giving you the amazing show that, well, we hope is, we hope you think it's amazing. I don't know. Uh, and you can always be anonymous. Pretty much everyone's anonymous if you haven't figured that out already. Uh, subscribe, rate us five stars. Next week, Jim Jeffries returns to recap The Bachelor. The Bachelor recap will be dropping Tuesday night. Bachelor's on Monday and Tuesday this week, next week. So our recap will drop after Tuesday's episode. We'll combine both into one. Until then, bye. Hey guys, thanks for watching, but before you go, make sure you like, subscribe, and ring that bell so you don't miss any future videos like our Monday's Ask Nick for your favorite relationship stories and advice, and our Tuesday Bachelor Recaps. See you next time.